So welcome to this one-off webinar sponsored by Dental Fusion on Direct Access. My name is Derek Watson. I'm a dentist and the chief executive of the Dental Fusion organization. The purposes of this presentation are to familiarize you with the issues involved in Direct Access, to incorporate any feedback in the DPA and DFO submissions, and to encourage you to make your own submission online before the deadline of the 31st of December 2012. And there will be a link to the GDC consultation at the end and in the email you get after every webinar. Now in May 2012, the Office of Fair Trading completed a quick and dirty eight-month market study of dentistry. And these are the principal findings of the OFT report. The fact that the NHS contract is inflexible is well known and obviously helps the Department of Health argue that their own contract is flawed and needs to be replaced. Insufficient information for patients is a hangover from the OFT's last report in 2003. They can't understand why a requirement to publish price lists isn't solving all the problems in dentistry, but that is the subject of a separate GDC consultation which also closes on 31st of December and I don't propose to go into that in detail here. The pressure to join dental payment plans uh, arose because the OFT thought that capitation plans might be the next payment protection insurance scandal but the plan providers soon put them straight on that so that's no longer an issue. Since 25% of all NHS patients are now having some private work unification of the NHS and private complaints procedures may be desirable but that's probably not on the cards anytime soon. That leaves the allegation that patients are having private treatment because they don't know that they can get work done on the NHS, which is the only point that the media picked up on and is probably the least important and the least significant of the entire list, but that's the mainstream media for you. And direct access, which may have been included at the Department of Health's request to help in its attempts to loosen up the dental labour market to improve access. The OFT made it clear that it had wanted the GDC to provide direct access in 2003 and it was less than pleased to find nine years later that its will had not been done. It basically told the GDC to pull its finger out. The threat is that the Office of Fair Trading will refer dentistry to the Competition Commission. Now I don't really know why that is supposed to be a threat but the GDC is treating it in the same way as it would treat a reference to the Spanish Inquisition and I'll come back to that in a few slides time. The OFT said that it considered that restrictions on direct access were sufficient for it to make a reference to the Competition Commission. In other words, it met the reference tests. But that because the restrictions can be relatively swiftly addressed by the GDC, it will settle on closely monitoring progress. In a paragraph a bit further down, the OFT admits that neither it nor the Competition Commission has any power to do anything other than recommend to the GDC what changes should be made. In other words, even if the GDC again did nothing and the, the issue of direct access was to be referred to the Competition Commission, all it could do would be to make a recommendation, not uh, abolish or dissolve or punish or fine or legislate, just recommend and I will probably remind you of that once again once we've run through the GDC's consultation document. This webinar has been set up in response to the General Dental Council's proposals to consult on direct access which means giving patients the option to see a dental care professional or DCP without having to see a dentist first. Dental care professionals are defined by the General Dental Council in their consultation as the people you see listed here. So the proposal is that members of the public would be allowed to make an appointment with any one of these classes of primary care dental workers without having to be referred by a dentist or even see a dentist. You will notice that they have gone slightly further than the OFT in their definition of DCPs because they want to include technicians who might for example need to take a shade. As part of the changes made to the Dentist Act in 2006 when DCP registration was expanded, the dental auxiliaries regulations was abolished and with it the lists of permitted duties. The practice of dentistry is now limited to GDC registrants who may carry out treatments or duties for which they are trained and competent and which fall within their scope of practice. 
Scope of practice is a way of describing what different members of the dental team are trained to do. You can download a list of scopes from the General Dental Council. Let's have a quick look at a hygienist scope. Dental hygienists, it says, are registered dental professionals who help patients maintain their oral health by preventing and treating gum disease and promoting good oral health practice. They carry out treatment under prescription from a dentist, which is presumably what will be altered. So what could a patient who went to see a hygienist directly expect? In addition to scaling and polishing, hygienists could take radiographs, whiten teeth and give laughing gas. What they don't do, according to the GDC's own scope, is diagnose disease. That's reserved for dentists and dental therapists. So a therapist might be able to do a dentist's job of diagnosis and prescription. So let's look at a therapist scope. Dental therapists have a shorter list of duties. It includes the requirement to work under prescription from a dentist, which again would presumably be thrown out. But according to the GDC, they do not carry out a patient's initial diagnosis or take overall responsibility for planning a, treat a patient's treatment. So it's clear that simply removing the requirement to work under prescription is not the only obstacle. The GDC's consultation is based on the scopes as they are at the moment, not on any theoretical future scope. Most DCPs, it seems, would have to be retrained to carry out an initial diagnosis and formulate a treatment plan, and in the hygienist's case, to diagnose disease. Now it's likely that the craft groups will argue that just because they do not do something does not mean that they cannot. Um, we may return to that later. In addition, European legislation such as the Medical Devices Directive stops technicians from prescribing dentures or bridges. So that may be an additional barrier. Here is the GDC's list of the what and who they have consulted so far. And this is the result they got from talking to people. The missing text incidentally is missing from their document, uh, by the way, not from this presentation. It's the way uh, that they printed it. You can see that the benefits are mainly theoretical, which is to be expected as this has not been tried before in the UK. Whereas the risks are mainly practical, such as confusion over roles and responsibilities. You might also note that it is less than impressive as a piece of work. The literature tended to show that patients were happier to visit DCPs directly, it cost them less, and they visited more often but that resources were wasted in referring back patients to see a dentist unnecessarily. An invitation to send feedback, as opposed to this formal consultation, elicited 840 responses. Dental professionals outnumbering the patients by a factor of 8 to 1. So this is obviously not gripping the public as much as it is the profession. Of the 710 who replied who were dental professionals, the majority were hygienists and therapists. More than twice as many hygienists and therapists replied as dentists. And pretty much as you would expect, given the sort of people that were responding, three quarters of them thought that hygienists and therapists should be able to see patients without seeing a dentist first. This gives you a hint as to why this consultation has been so controversial. There is a lot at stake. Direct access would open up the dentistry market to DCPs and see a big increase in their commercial potential. Dentists, at least the ones who are not unemployed, may see it as an economic threat, or they may see it as an opportunity to get on with the big crown and bridge work and implants, so they are more equivocal. The GDC has decided to base its decision on whether direct access would represent a risk to patient safety, with no regard, for example, for cost effectiveness or whether large parts of the profession might boycott any such system. And they have asked questions about whether this is the correct approach. Now, I don't intend to consider every single question they ask, but just focus on the important one, which is whether, all things considered, 
this is a good idea or not. Please, uh, if you can, try and remember this statement because that's on screen now because I'll be asking you to vote on it later. This does beg several large questions, for example, when an out-of-hours service was set up at three hospital centres in Kent, it quickly built up its own clientele. Initially, the repeat attenders were told to find a dentist, and eventually a rule had to be brought in that once a person had attended with an abscess twice for antibiotics, then they would not be seen again until they had seen a dentist. But even this did not stop people using it regularly as a convenient drop-in centre after work, and the centres were ethically unable to turn away anyone who said they were in pain. We do know there are a large number of patients who just want to scale and polish without the expense of a checkup, and as soon as they can get that without seeing a dentist, then is that all they are probably going to do? Another point is that this is not a consultation on what to do. The GDC has already decided what to do, and it's summarised here. A consultation is a formality that has to be gone through before its decision can be put into effect. In thinking what to do, the GDC has to decide between the competing pressures from the OFT, the Department of Health, patients and the profession, of which the OFT is probably the strongest. So if the decision has already been made, what's the point of responding to a consultation? Well, we don't know yet what the result will be. The British Dental Association has been given the job of responding on behalf of the profession and they are against it. Hardly surprising considering their membership consists of dentists and nobody else. This has made a lot of dental hygienists and therapists very unhappy. But notice that the only reason the BDA gives is workforce implications without expanding on that. This sounds suspiciously like another way of saying unemployed dentists. So, both sides are assuming that the decision will come down in favour of the other. And if you lose and you want to fight on, you have to put down a marker in the sand in order to be able to say, I told you so. And as the saying goes, everything before the event is a reason, everything after the event is an excuse. To attempt to reconcile their scope document with the OFT's demands on direct access, the GDC has come up with a list of what might need to be modified. Hygienists and therapists would be let loose immediately. With nurses and orthodontic therapists involved in public health programs and screening. Unfortunately, the poor old technician who wants so desperately to see patients is still going to be stuck in the basement slaving over a hot wax knife. Clinical dental technicians already have direct access to edentate patients but may be given access to dentate patients and will therefore have the not inconsiderable problem of learning how to diagnose and treatment plan in a dentate mouth. So if you go to the GDC's website at the moment, this is what you will see, a load of gobbledygook that has been there for days. So either they don't want any more submissions or they can't be bothered to maintain their own website. So what I've done is found the web link for you and even shortened it. But it is case sensitive, so please type the GDC-DC in uppercase, and that link will be in the post-webinar email. This is the structure of the GDC that will be responsible for deciding what to do. Each level will make a decision and pass it upwards. This has a snowball effect, if a snowball can roll upwards, with each level not wishing to second guess the work that the lower tier has done. Unfortunately, it does mean that, in effect, all the important decisions are made by the least important committees, with the General Dental Council being the final rubber stamp. The Direct Access Task and Finish Group has one dentist, one DCP, and two lay members. They are Paul Averley, a dentist who specializes in conscious sedation, Hazel Fraser, former president of the British Association of Dental Therapists, Rosemary Carter, a consultant solicitor, and the chairperson Anne-Marie Telford, a retired doctor from Northern Ireland. The voting dynamics of these groups can be a bit suspect. For example, in a previous group that considered removing the courtesy title doctor from dentists, the dentist in the group voted against, and the other three, 
who were a technician and two lay members, voted in favour, meaning that the vote was carried by a majority of people that wouldn't have been affected. It's the Midlothian question in another guise. So, let's quickly summarise. The OFT is very keen on the change, possibly as a result of a strong arm briefing from the Department of Health. The Competition Commission is an empty threat. The GDC is only interested in risk of harm to patients. And the two sides with vested interests are, predictably, lining up on opposite sides of the question. Well, that sounds like the perfect time to put it to the vote of the people here. So if I put the uh, voting screen up, please, uh, if you want to participate, please select one of the five options. That's great. Thanks very much. Well, I'm pleased to say that um, opinion is, is pretty well evenly split with uh, roughly one third of the audience strongly agreeing, one third of the audience strongly disagreeing, and one third of the audience uh, neither agreeing nor disagreeing. So it sounds like it's going to be a, a, close, uh, a close call. In conclusion, I'd just like to say that this webinar uh, is in addition to our series of information technology management and financial webinars. And if you're watching this live and you are a DFO member, then you will get free verifiable CPD. If you're not a member, then please consider joining as it's open to everybody registered with the GDC and includes over £1,000 worth of benefits, not including the webinars. And that about wraps it up. So thanks for your time and attention.